All right, so solving polynomial inequalities. When we're looking at this, it's not overly difficult. Um, what we have to think of is actually solving an inequality itself. So we have first um, a linear inequality. So x plus 4 is equal to or less than 12. This is the same as solving an equation. So this would be we'd subtract the 4 over the other side x has to be equal to or less than 8 for that to be true. Because if x was equal to 8, it would be 8 plus 4 is 12, and then they would be equal to, and then anything less than that, obviously that solution is going to be less than 12. Okay, kind of looking at this next one, we're going to move the x to the right and the 6 to the left. So we'd get 3 plus 6, and... 2x, and I'm writing this whole step out here. So then we get 9 is equal to or less than x. And that would make this solution. And if you wanted to check, you could always sub 9 in to see which side is going to be equal to or greater. Um, but that's going to make this solution true. All right. <coughs> Looking at the next thing, what we have to remember is if we divide by a negative, so this might not be remembering, this might be new to some of you, it's going to change the way the inequality looks. Now I'm going to show you that in two examples here. So first, when you divide by a negative, you need to switch the inequality. So if we divided both sides by negative 3 here, we'd get x, we switch the inequality, so x is equal to or greater than, and it's got to be negative 3. Okay, so then if we were to look at it a different way, so I switched the inequality, that's just kind of the rule. If I were to look at it this way, um, we're going to look at, I'm going to move that 3 to the right by adding it to both sides. So if I move that 3, we'd get 0, 9 plus 3x. Now I've got to move the 9 over, so it's going to become negative 9. And the 3x is there. And then when I divide, I get negative 3 and my x. So it's actually the exact same answer. These are the same solution. One's obviously just a little bit longer. Okay, so if we were to do this, I'm going to show you again. Here, we're going to move the 4 over, so we get negative 2x greater than 13. So that would be x is equal to or greater than 13, or negative 13 over 2. Okay, if I were to move it, so do it the long way, we get 4, and leave that, so we get 17 plus 2x. And then bring that over, we get negative 13 and negative 13 over 2. Okay, so the inequality signs are actually on the same, or looking the same way. The equation is just flipped around there. So if we divide by a negative, we have to switch the inequality just because of that second kind of long way of doing things. All right, so if we're looking at this, so solving inequalities, I'm just going to move this down a little bit so we can see it better. Um, solving polynomial inequalities can be best solved analyzing the related polynomial function. What we're going to actually do is find the zeros, and then we're going to test all the intervals around those zeros. So what we have to do is if we look here, we've got x equals negative 3, and here we've got x equals 3 over 2, or 1.5. I'm going to use 1.5 just for simplicity, but you should use the fraction. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking in order of like a number line. Negative 3 comes first, and 1.5 would go right there. What we're going to look at is actually the in-between numbers. We know that this whole equation is going to be equal to 0, because this is 0, Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. This is negative 9. But when we multiply them together, that's going to be 0. This is 4.5. This is 0. So this is 0. So we don't really need to consider those two parts of the equation. What we do need to consider, however, is when 
x is less than negative 3, when x is between negative 3 and 1.5, and when x is greater than 1.5. Now what I would like to suggest is when you're doing this, choose drastic numbers, because all that actually matters is the sign of the bracket. So here I would choose like negative 1,000. Okay, here I'm going to choose zero because that's easier to see the sign of the bracket. All I'm going to put in the chart is the sign of the bracket. I don't really care whether we get um, negative 10 or negative 100. The sign of the bracket is important because we need to look whether it's going to make this whole equation, this last line, greater than zero. Okay, so what we're looking at here, and here we'll have, let's say, a thousand. Okay, so negative 1,000, negative 1,000 plus 3 is still negative. Negative 1,000 times 2 with another negative in there, that's going to be negative. So two negatives multiplied together gives me a positive. 0 plus 3 is positive. 0 minus 3 is negative. And then 1,000, that looks like 1,060, it doesn't really matter. This is going to be positive. This is going to be positive. A po sorry, I didn't do the middle one. A positive and a negative makes a negative. A positive and a positive makes a positive. So this interval works, this interval doesn't work, and this interval does work. So my solutions are here and here. So this inequality is true, so we're going to have x such that what do we have? x is less than 0, so we're going to do it in interval notation. So between negative infinity and negative 3. We can't include negative 3 because at negative 3 it's equal to 0. And then 1.5 to infinity. Okay. Now we can also do it, so you can make that chart every time if you want, and it's pretty foolproof. We can also do it using a number line, knowing that a open dot on the number line means that we're not including it, and a closed dot means we are. So this was an open dot, okay? We have not including it. It's greater than. We can't be equal to it. This one, however, we can equal 0. So our solution can equal to 0 here. So if we were doing this on a number line, okay, so what we have to look at is we essentially have four brackets that we're going to look at. Okay, now open dot means not including. And that means we don't have the equal sign in the inequality, and this is including we do have the equal sign in the inequality. Okay, if I were to do a number line here, we've got x is equal to negative 4, x equals 2, x equals negative 1. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to have three spots on this line. I'm going to erase that. We're going to have a closed dot at negative 4, a closed dot at negative 1, and a closed dot at 2. And notice my number line's not really spaced out correctly, but we've got negative 4, negative 1, and 2. You get the idea. Okay, now we need to choose numbers. So number less than negative 4, negative 1,000. A number between negative 4 and negative 1. I'm going to choose negative 2 just because it's smaller than negative 3. Then a number between negative 1 and 2, I'm going to choose 0. And a number greater than 2, I'm going to choose 1,000. Now, to start with, we're always going to have a negative because of that first negative. So each of these will start with a negative. And then this first bracket. Okay, so I'm going to work down the brackets. Okay, plugging in negative 1,000 first. So negative 1,000 plus 4 is negative. Negative 1,000 minus 2, negative. Negative 1,000 plus 1 is negative. Four negatives makes a positive. So next, 
I'm going to look at the second bracket. So we've done this first bracket. Second bracket. Or sorry, we've done this first equation here with the negative. The second one. Negative 2 plus 4 is positive. Negative whole or negative 2 minus 2 is negative, and negative 2 plus 1 is negative. Three negatives gives me a negative, so we're done this one. 0 plus 4 is positive, 0 minus 2 is negative, and 0 plus 1 is positive. So this one is going to be positive. And then my last one, 1,000, we're going to have negative, positive, 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 and that's going to be negative. Okay, and I'm multiplying them together. That's why I'm getting these overall positives and negatives. I'm doing negative times a negative times a negative times a negative for the first one. So when we're looking at this, and I'm just color coding it so it's a little bit easier, we need to be less than zero. Okay, so whoops, we want to be less than zero. Okay, or equal to. So what we're going to look at is what is the negative number. So that means this one, this interval is negative between negative 4 and negative 1, and this interval is negative, greater than 2. So we're going to have x such that, and we're square brackets this time because we want to include it. We're between negative 4 and negative 1, and 2 to positive infinity. Okay? And that's what, those are the two different ways. You can either make the chart. The chart's going to get really big if you have something like a polynomial like this or something even bigger if you have, say, one more degree. Okay, I do like the number line. I think it's faster, and it's just a smaller version of the chart.